Welcome to RNG Fest 2023. It's chapters 15, 16, and 16x of Fire Emblem 12, Lunatic Reverse, 0% Growths. These three chapters are all very crit heavy and also very short, so I decided to lump them all together and get it over with. We're back to fighting a regular army of humans instead of dragons though, so I am pretty happy about that. Like all good Fire Emblem skips, we need a bunch of flyers, and there's not much else to say about preparations this time, so let's get started with chapter 15. A new general named Dolph joins us at the start, and I will enjoy selling his weapons for gold. We open up with Minerva using the hammer to crit the boss. She also has the Light Sphere, which negates the defense and avoid bonuses of the boss's gate tile, making him significantly easier to hit and thus crit. And we get 1100 gold disguised as a Silver Lance for our trouble. Next up, Leiden and Belf team up against an admittedly strong bishop for a new physics staff, which I need pretty badly. My favorite thing about Belf and Leiden is their coats. My second favorite thing is their high base stats. Next is Daros, with a little strength boost from the Star Sphere to crit this sniper and get a new killer bow. In hindsight, Belf with the Star Sphere and Killer Lance would have been slightly more reliable due to higher skill. I'm not sure why I thought this had to be Daros. I'd love to credit whoever invented this. Leave a comment if you know who found this strat. As we've seen, a lot of classes can walk onto river tiles, but only Pirate, Berserker, and for whatever reason, Freelancer can walk on sea tiles. So Zane can step right onto the water here, imitate Cord. Let's face it, who wouldn't want to do that? Look at that jawline! Look at that chin! This man is carved from stone. Zane can now skip the whole map for us by rescuing Marth near the gate. Est is in prison in the southeast, but she's already blue at the start of the map, so we don't have to worry about her. Marth recruits Abel at the gate, and we're out in one turn. Now, Chapter 16 is easily the highest density of crits in the game, except for the Medius kill, but that hardly counts. The most annoying thing is a thief with 28 speed who starts pretty far away from you and is carrying the Geosphere, which is necessary for the good ending, and he will escape the map on turn 4 enemy phase. With 28 speed, even if a unit is holding the Star Sphere, they simply cannot possibly double that thief if they are a high movement class, so we're forced to rely on crits if we want to go fast. In a two-turn clear, you have to use a Crit Forged 1-2 weapon with a Draco Knight or a Paladin, but the Astrum recruitment is forcing us in this run into a three-turn clear anyway, so our most reliable solution is actually Beck with both the Wodao and the Killer Bow. We gain another new general, who I guess is Dolph's twin, named Maselin. He's actually got some interesting qualities that we'll look at later, but I will still enjoy selling his weapons for gold. And at long last, we get the speed bond between Cord and the Avatar. Zane imitates Pala, no surprise there, and George heads off with Fina's help to recruit Astrum. We're absolutely forced to go the long way around to reach Astrum, because his heroes guarding the short path will annihilate our entire army. The trouble with this map is the treasure room. We can't possibly reach it on the ground, and the enemy thieves will start looting it on turn 3 enemy phase. As soon as a treasure chest is opened, either by a thief or even the thief's staff, or if the door to the throne room to our right is opened, three waves of reinforcements will start spawning from the south and will be exposed to the tough enemies packing the throne room. So that's why we're not frantically using the Thief Staff on the first two turns. Turn two, we need to start with a Wodao crit from Beck, and the reversal mechanic is making this a bit dicier than usual. Now see this Thief body blocking the door to Astrum? That's why we have to take a three turn clear. George just has to chill out this turn. He did need to get into that doorway on turn one, uh, or a different thief would have gotten in ahead of us and would body block us again the same way next turn. But we stopped him from getting in there on turn one. Not much else going on this turn, we're just getting set up to storm the throne room next turn. Alright, turn three, time for the show. Beck needs another crit with the Killer Bow, and survives the reversal mechanic because of the pure water from turn 1, the Star Sphere, and a Physic he got last turn. He convoy warps his prize, the Geosphere, which gives 10 crit to everyone in a 3 tile radius around the holder, but tragically that does not include the holder themselves. Keep that in mind. George can finally recruit Astrum, although in a rather dick move it does not pacify his cohort of deadly heroes, so we need to get out of here right away. I do a pretty cool setup with the Geosphere here, much better than my last run. Julian's gonna grab it for us from the convoy and trade it to Zane before opening the door. Now we use a save tile and reset for Marth to crit with the Devil Sword. There's just no other way. But the 10 crit from the Geosphere helps, and this is why I was so casual about giving Marth an Angelic Robe in Chapter 12, because he needs it to survive here as well. I'd like to see a crit from Etzel before we have to use the second save tile, and he brings it home for us even without the Geosphere. Zane fortunately does not need a crit, he doubles this unarmed bishop, which is probably a war crime, but I literally cannot beat the game without that Fortify Staff. And he's also now in position to give the Geosphere buff to our last two kills. 
The second save tile goes down, and we have to waste Pala on this very rude sniper blocking Marth's path to the throne. He's extremely beefy, and he has to die, so that is Pala's job, even though he doesn't drop any treasure. Our last kill, though, is juicy 0% growth goodness. It's serious! Back with his B rank in swords as a paladin. The only 10 move option who can use the Master Sword for optimal crit chance. Very cool. Love you, Sirius. The Avatar's Masquerade Mask is now canonically a tribute to Sirius. Everything so far this turn was literally necessary, so the best I can possibly do is only two Thief Staff uses in this chapter. We'll be taking the Rescue Staff and the Large Bullion, leaving behind a Speedwing. I actually don't need the Speedwing this time because of the two Speed Bonds from deploying Catria and Cord with the Avatar ten times. So that is the answer to the Cord question. There's only two chapters after this where that Speedwing would be able to save turns, and each of those two chapters would need it on a different unit. So the two Speed Bonds allow me to hit what I believe are optimal turn counts, and we get 10k gold instead. On to 16x. Like the side chapters before it, 16x is quite small and designed in an annoying way. The Avatar is a required deployment for the first time since the prologues, leaving only five other slots. In order to deal with the enemy Swordmasters and Berserkers, we need some killer speed of our own in the form of Swordmaster Pala, making her first appearance this run. To that end, we'll buy an arm scroll for her, along with the one chilling in our convoy to get her to A rank swords, allowing her to use the Mercurius, as well as both a speed bond and defense bond. In my vanilla hard 3 run, Leiden was our Mercurius user, but sadly he won't see any more deployment in this run, because Pala can do everything he would do, but better. Shout out to Leiden and his sick ass coat though, on the bench. Getting into the fight, we'll chip at this first Berserker with 11 swords, so Etzel can kill it without critting. Note that the weapon ranks we gave Pala added 2 damage to each of those hits, as did the Star Sphere, resulting in a surprising amount of damage. Fina comes in carrying the Geosphere, and the degeneracy begins. The Avatar needs this 30% Parthia crit on a Berserker without a Tomahawk. Then Daros needs a 36% Killer X crit, where Minerva wouldn't be strong enough. Finally, Pala needs to dodge this second Tomahawk Berserker, who only has 62 hit against her, which would have been 72, except the Avatar is giving her a 10 avoid support bonus, which is very nice. And our Queen hits level cap. Note that Etzel grabs the Geosphere from Fina here, and of course gets an unnecessary crit to make me feel like I wasted those incredibly valuable Leaven Sword uses. Minerva goes to pull one of the snipers, and Marth is being chilling. This absolute devastation you're about to see on this enemy phase is only possible because of the speed and defense bonds. You cannot just ignore your avatar in 0% growth in this game. The bonds are too good. Alright, the hard part is over now, but we do need one more crit. Daros needs to show up again against this sniper, and that's why Etzel took the Geosphere, since Daros is too far away from Fina now. In order to recruit Katarina, the avatar has to talk to Katarina three times. The avatar needs either the Star Sphere or a Pure Water to survive enemy phase against her, and it's going to be the Pure Water, since Daros actually needs the Star Sphere to be able to kill the sniper. If he didn't have the Star Sphere and say Etzel finished off the sniper at low health, then Katarina would kill Etzel on enemy phase. Pala is free to go take care of the remaining sniper with Fina's help, although without the Star Sphere she has to debut the Mercurius for the first time to do the job. Berserker reinforcements spawn from the two forts on turn 2 enemy phase, so Minerva and Marth need to block those off. This didn't really need to be Minerva, just anyone who can survive a round of combat with that sniper, but I'm not about to bench one of my queens. Now with Fina's help we talk two more times and recruit our new late game hypercarry in just three turns. One turn faster than my hard three run thanks to the speed bond. Even with how strong Pala is, I couldn't put together a three turn clear without that speed bond. Now just a heads up, there are zero crits in the next two chapters, so it's a return to form next time, I'll see you there, and thanks for watching.